Greetings, salutations, all that shit, whatever they call it. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back. I hope your weekend was uh, stellar. Fucking awesome. Um, and right off the bat, he's on. This is uh, great. A surprise, Mr. Gilbert Gottfried. There he is. Hi. So, so you still have a show? Can you believe it? I yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a, a, a lot more talented and intelligent people have tried and failed, and yet you still have a show. Isn't it amazing? It's some <laughs> magical ingredient that I can't even figure out, Gilbert, that I've been able to do for seven, seven years now. I've been doing this dumb show. Uh, yeah, yeah. It must, it, I, I don't know about talent, uh, but something... <laughs> Keeps me coming back on a daily basis and keeps people watching. I don't get it myself, so yes, very appreciated. Um, you, uh, I, now I recall years ago you were uh, what they call canceled for uh, for, yes. for making a joke, whatever the hell. Uh, but from uh, of course a duck voice gig that was probably a good, great paying uh, a gig uh, yes. for an insurance company. And uh, now let me get this straight. It was a joke. You didn't kill anybody, right? You didn't shoot anybody? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the way people reacted, I'm not so sure. I know. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still checking if I've got blood on my hands. <laughs> Just a joke. Because I, 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 I mean, they, they fired me. They got rid of me quicker than shit out of a duck's <laughs> ass. <laughs> and, and meanwhile, someone like Alec Baldwin, who... Uh, who uh, Killed somebody uh, <laughs> over the weekend. Uh, he he's still doing endorsements, and I see him on commercials yeah, and yeah. See, movies. See now, now I can call back Affleck and go see. I never actually shot anyone, <laughs> I didn't shoot anybody. <laughs> but on, on why on one of the news reports, the anchor man when I was fired, <laughs> they had footage of the tsunami, like these enormous waves, and they said. And to make matters worse, comedian Gilbert Gottfried. Worse. <laughs> and and I, I made it worse. <laughs> the, that's the kind of power that I wield. <laughs> to make matters worse. Not yes. like, hey, and as a, an aside to this tragedy, Gilbert, no, it, ma it made it. It's like, boy, th that wall of water that swallowed my family up was pretty bad. But I got to tell you, it was yeah. worse when Gilbert yeah. Gottfried made a joke about it. I, I, I feel terrible that my country is uh, <laughs> totally underwater now. But uh, uh, did you see what Gilbert Gottfried said? <laughs> it, it is amazing. The, the 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 it's just so vague as to what makes people uh, angry and gets people fired and other things like all I see about this Alec Baldwin thing is people making excuses for him that it was an accident. I've heard it called a misfire. The guy literally pointed a gun at someone and shot them. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like, oh shit, it went off or I dropped it or anything. He literally did what you do when you want to kill someone with a gun. <laughs> yeah. So see I should I should actually shoot someone. Yes, kill for and then then Affleck will go, well, oh, he shot someone. I <laughs> thought he made a joke. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, it's all different now. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> fine. I don't know. It's uh, it's still all up in the air. That was the big story of the weekend, of course, was uh, Alec Baldwin shooting uh, two people. Went right through the first lady and shot the director that was standing right behind him, uh, uh, right behind her. And apparently the girl that was supposed to be taking care of the guns is just some crazed uh, TikTok girl with green hair. And, and she didn't look at the gun properly. And, and Alec Baldwin didn't check it like he's supposed to. And again, just pointed it at someone and pulled the trigger. There's your armorer. That's the, uh, the person. Have you ever handled a firearm on a set, Gilbert? Uh, yes. Yes. And um, usually... Uh, they, uh, they'll come over to you and they'll open up the gun and show yes. you that it's empty. Right. <laughs> uh, here, I guess they didn't, I, this green haired girl, uh, <laughs> yeah. is she the one that, uh, 
was handling the guns or she's the one that was supposed to make sure everything is uh, copacetic she's the so, one that was supposed uh, to open the cylinder and show him that there's uh, nothing in there and, and i guess she didn't <laughs> so a girl with green hair and a nose ring yeah, was yeah. in charge of people's lives she was too busy doing a <laughs> maybe a tiktok dance lip sync <laughs> video uh, to make sure Alec Baldwin wouldn't kill somebody. <laughs> I don't know. It's what movie did you uh, have a little gunplay in? Uh, let's see. Well, one thing I did years ago. Uh, this was at the Hollywood Prop Museum, I think it was called. And some, I, uh, I it was for some like God knows, you know, Sunday Funnies or one of those old comedy shows. Yeah, and and they uh, they had a gun in there, and and th- back then I didn't know firing a gun was that. Well, I knew firing a gun was dangerous. <laughs> I'm not yeah. that fucking stupid, uh, but uh, I, I I had no idea like guns with blanks. They make it sound like. Oh, it's it has blanks. Yeah. But oh, who was what was the name of that guy? He was on Alias Smith and Jones. Uh, John Eric Hexum. Yes. Yes. He was sitting there. And <laughs> as a joke, uh, he put the gun to his head and pulled the trigger. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the 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 energy from the charge itself and the little wadding, there's paper or wax wadding or something. It, the energy, though, took a piece of his skull, made that the projectile, and it drove it right into his brain. It, it was just like as if he would have shot himself uh, in the head. It, people don't understand it. It's because you watch movies and in the old days, even Animal House, remember when they gave fucking yes. Flounder the gun and then they go, don't worry, it's just blanks. Yes, because like, like, oh, it's just blanks and people think they're not dangerous, but you could fuck someone up with blanks. I, yeah, few people have died with. But wasn't uh, what was some um, um, Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee. This yes. was an interesting case. What happened with Brandon Lee was they needed a shot of the front of the revolver. So when you look at a revolver from the front, you could see the lead in the chambers of the yes. cylinder. So they needed that shot. So what they did was they took out the powder and put the bullet back and put those bullets in without gunpowder. But the primer, the thing that the firing pin hits to ignite the powder, they left in there. That had enough of a charge to make the lead pop out just a little bit and go into the barrel. So they didn't know that the gun actually had a round in the barrel now. Then they changed it out for the harmless blanks, and they put those in there for the money shot, and that fired, and all the energy behind the lead bullet that was left in the barrel from the previous uh, thing uh, came out and shot him in the abdomen. And they all were just like... All right. Well, we're still going with the scene. Uh, He's laying on the floor because he was supposed to just lay on the floor like he was dead. And uh, he was. They just were like, all right, cut. Great job, Brandon. Great. uh, You want to get up? Oh, he's method acting. He's fucking. I said, great job, Brandon. Oh, and great job to that green haired girl. Yeah, green haired gun girl. (laughs) She did a bang up job with the uh, weapons. What a a weapons expert. She's in demand. That's a <laughs> green girl. The green- it, but in movies, they always do that. They'll say, oh, it's okay. It's blanks. And it's yeah. like blanks kill people. It's- yeah, yeah, yeah. Blanks. Uh, now there's a whole big thing of uh, should there even be real guns on movie sets? Why can't they just do it CGI? Uh, I think there's this kind of Hollywood is very traditional they tradition, you know, molesting children is a tradition <laughs> in Hollywood. They don't want to. They don't want to steer clear of that. Uh, starlets, uh, fucking starlets on the casting couch, yeah, things like that. But uh, it, it, it's a tradition, and it just looks better. The muzzle flash is real. Uh, and and to get someone to act like there's some recoil to a gun, yes, is yes. It, it, it it doesn't look authentic sometimes. So I think for authenticity, they like using it. And for the most part, it's been safe in thousands of movies that no one's been heard on. So yeah, you know, it, it, it's like yeah, I remember I did it in um, yeah, it was something in a prop house, 
And uh, I was like firing a gun in the air and, you know, saying stuff and firing a gun. And Yosemite Sam. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you varmint. <laughs> and uh, oh, another thing with guns that's total bullshit <laughs> is, is the idea of a silencer. <laughs> <laughs> that goes like it makes like a little spit sound, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like a, it makes like people spit louder than a silencer in movies. Uh, someone yeah. described it as a as a cat sneezing. <laughs> it it really is when you see them. Uh, they shoot someone right next to another person, and the other person just like. Yes, uh, I think I, I think I heard something. It might have been the leaves rustling. Yeah, yeah, it makes a little more of a noise than uh, and, they show in the and movies. They they say with a silencer, the silencers that they have are gigantic. They're yeah. not like the type you take out of your jacket and put on. <laughs> they screw it on any gun. Yes, yes. <laughs> And they say it's still loud. It's idea. Yeah, yeah, it's still loud. And the the actual the mechanics of the gun uh, racking back if it's a semi automatic uh, pistol that makes a sound. So you know it, it's it's not as quiet as they like to say. But again, movie no, you know movie magic. It, it's it's like oh the hero has two machine guns, <laughs> one and he's able to hold it. That yeah, shows yeah. how macho he is. Right. He's a fucking man. He's a <laughs> real man. You know, it's great. They use uh, the I, one of the most preferred guns for bad guys to have in movies is called an MP5. It's uh, a small kind of a machine pistol looking thing, but sometimes it has a stock on it. It's pretty small, though. Everyone was using it in Die Hard. Like that was the move, yes. the fucking movie gun in Die Hard. Um, and, and until you actually shoot one in real life, you realize this would last for about a tenth of a second of shooting. Like you go, oh, yes, oh, and it's empty. Yes. It's fucking empty. And they just, there it is. That's like your preferred fucking weapon of Hans Gruber and his crew. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that that's a 30 round magazine and you will go through that in second, like a second and, and it's empty. And uh, that's another thing about the bullshit of guns in movies is how long uh, your ammo lasts. <laughs> oh, you they ran through the entire skyscraper with yeah, that yeah. one gun. With Just never reloading. Firing away and, and Oh, here's what I wanna know too. I wanna ask a doctor this. <laughs> I'm uh, a doctor. Like the hero always, you know, he'll get shot. When yeah. he does get shot, it's always in the shoulder. <laughs> And and uh, so is the shoulder like this safe area? You could take a bullet in your shoulder and right. you're fine after that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, like right in this area, there's a lot of cardiopulmonary uh, uh, arteries <laughs> and and veins and important things. And and of course, the the further you have to go down a limb. The, the thicker the artery is up at the top as it branches out to feed your arms and legs and whatnot. So I would think there's probably a major fucking pipe in here that if you get hit in it, you're dead. <laughs> so then uh, you're advising people not to get shot in the shoulder. Don't shoot yourself in the shoulder. You've seen a lot of these people do this when they want to seem like they were a victim of a crime. They kill yeah. their wife or something. Yes, and it's like, yes. uh, And then they take the gun and they shoot themselves in the shoulder and go, oh, I barely made it out myself, you know? And, and then they're like, why, why, how come the gun was pointed immediately? Like, they find, I watch enough forensic files to know that's bullshit. But they never even get them like here. It's usually like right on the, they barely nick them and go, yes, oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always those cases where they'll go, oh, they, they shot and stabbed my wife and kids. <laughs> And uh, and then he slapped me in the face really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I barely got away with my my dignity. It yeah, was he yeah. he pulled off one of the buttons from my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> This guy meant business. He stabbed my wife 80 times in the heart and face and left her positioned like a whore. But 
Yeah, he called me some pretty nasty names before departing. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, we have now, enough crime And then shows. there was that famous case. I think he may have been a sergeant or something. He killed his wife. And this was around the time of the Manson family and all <laughs> that. So he wrote on the walls, uh, LSD is groovy. <laughs> Was it Greg <laughs> Brady? The Greg Brady yeah, crimes? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean... <laughs> And that just shows, like, the, how how unhip this guy was. <laughs> ah, groovy. It, it's it's like the kind of thing it, when Bob Hope and Lucille Ball would dress up as hippies. Uh, that that's something they would say, like, "Oh, uh, hey, you know, LSD is groovy." Huh? <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> let me tell you something, Lucy. That LSD is pretty groovy. I gotta tell you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Bob. It's Bob. I take acid hope for Texaco. Now, I heard Bob Hope used to on those those war tours like Vietnam, Vietnam and everything. Yeah. He always had some hot babe. You know, they'd be. Oh, like always. Belch or hey, Joey ladies Heatherton. and gentlemen, bring it to the stage. Let's give a big hand for Joey Heatherton. All right. Yes. Here comes. The lovely oh, Joey and Heather and Charo. It was the same joke. The yeah. same joke he would do. I just want you boys to see what you're fighting for. <laughs> and, and I heard, what I heard about Bob Hope <laughs> is, is he used to, if he tried to fuck them and they'd say no, he would threaten them <laughs> with like, that we're all going to, you know, ship up, uh, put our shit on the plane and fly off. And we're leaving you in the jungles of Vietnam. If you, don't fuck me. <laughs> you can either fuck Bob Hope or the Viet Cong. One or the other, honey. Make a decision. You're on the road to chlamydia. <laughs> God damn, that makes sense. They were all just fucking sexual deviants back then. All those guys were getting pussy. I had to fuck around on my wife, Dolores, when we were out there in the yeah. Nam. I got the date Da Nang Crotchrot when I uh, fucked some VC chick. She put razor blades in her pussy. <laughs> oh, Jesus well, Christ. It, it's just like what gets me is, uh, now that Harvey Weinstein is in prison, there are no producers or directors fucking young girls oh. who want to get into the movie. No. So, oh, <laughs> oh. That's got to make a comeback, though, after, you know, after a little time. I think it's just in their blood. If you're some nerdy guy or some business guy and you couldn't get pussy by being a, a, a good looking actor in Hollywood, you became a producer and then you get the girls because they wanted the gigs. I don't think that like natural mindset is going to change because of uh, the Me Too movement or anything. Yeah, it, it's just like when uh, what was the name of those two like black German uh, uh, singers uh, with the long dreadlocks? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli. <laughs> like Millie Vanilli, also known as. German black eyes with dreadlocks. <laughs> with dreadlocks. Uh, yeah. uh, they, I, I always thought there too. Uh, now that they're over with, nobody is uh, has any dubbed in singing going on. That's, no, no. That's over with. That's over. I think they figured out how to actually make bad singers sound good with, with uh, electronics and whatnot. So they yes. don't have to literally replace them with... Uh, you know, the first time I ever had experience with that, it was the episode of uh, Fred uh, Flintstone on the Flintstones when he had, uh, and rock is going to roll with all his might in bit rock, <laughs> twitch, twitch. And then it, the record skipped, <laughs> and rock is going to roll, and rock is going to roll, and rock is going. And then they were all like, boo, boo, and started throwing shit at him. And I'm like, oh, well, that's probably why. And it literally happened to Millie Vanilli, exactly like it happened to Fred yes. Flintstone. <laughs> Or it happened also, uh, oh, uh, to the, the other Simpson sister. Yeah, on Saturday Night Live, right? She, uh, yeah, it, they it, like played the wrong song. Yeah, or something. yeah. 
It's like you think they'd have better equipment than literally a record player. <laughs> All right, <laughs> here she goes. <laughs> Put a penny on the top to hold the stylus uh, down. And, and oh, and they also use that uh, uh, dubbing in gag on on one episode of Andy Griffith, where who was singing? Uh, yeah, yeah. Barney <laughs> is supposed to sing, but he can't sing. So uh, Gomer uh, <laughs> sings. Oh, yes. Well, Gomer had that amazing voice that they had a highlight on, on the show every so often. That was and, Gomer's and, voice. Yeah. And and I always wondered with that, if you spoke to actual opera singers and said, do you think Jim Neighbors was really that great a singer? <laughs> they, you know, they, they you know, I, I think it's that. Everyone was so shocked that he'd go from, you know, golly. Right. And then I think you could sing like me. And they go, oh, my God, what a great voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was. It was just the contrast. Graded on a curve, he was an amazing singer because it's yes. like, well, golly, was- Sergeant Carter, I'm going to sing for the Marine Band. And then, uh, you know, oh, he'd, he'd do that shit. But, yeah, I think he was kind of average. Another one who was like that in the average singer category, but also he went, oh, my God, he's great, uh, was um, Crazy Guggenheim <laughs> crazy. on the Jackie Gleason show. Crazy Guggenheim. Because it would be, hi, Joe. <laughs> hi, Mr. Donahue. <laughs> I went out with the fuck was it, Jake? And then he'd go, in your Easter bonnet, with all the frills upon it, they will be. I hear you. I used to up on a corner where we used to walk by and see the monkeys and the windows and everything. Oh, jeez. It's there and done. Yeah. I'll never forget that. Boy, one day I went in there to go and get my mother a birthday present. Oh, they had a lot of nice things to get in there. Yeah. I wanted the best for my mother. You know how it is. I went in there and I said, I said to the clerk, Marty, I said, give me that parrot. That's the one I want. Beautiful looking parrot. He says, that'll cost you $20. I said, for so what? A parrot? He said, that's a very intelligent parrot. Why, that parrot speaks seven languages. I said, yeah. He said, yeah. <laughs> well, I want the best for my mother, Joe. So I gave him the $20, and I went home, and I put it on the table. And I went out. I wanted to surprise my mother. His jokes went, went on out. and on. <laughs> <laughs> I came home about supper time. I said, hi, Ma." How you like your birthday present? He said, what present? I said, the parrot. She said, I thought it was a chicken. I plucked it and cooked it. That's a joke? That, that's like a joke that was too old to use in vaudeville. <laughs> yeah. You did that on a vaudeville stage. They go, oh, not that one. <laughs> oh, he's doing the parrot chicken bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you have him singing? Now, pack okay, your sure. steamer trunk and get the hell out of here. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now, find a find a video of him singing because that's why everybody <laughs> went like, uh, you know, he's. Let's be real. He's playing a retarded guy. <laughs> it's yes, pretty much what he's yes. doing. That's it. Con- no drunk sounds. No, like no, that. that's not a drunk guy. That's a retarded gentleman. Uh, that was go- going into the bar. And then he would sing, and people were like, oh, my God, he sings so well. It's like, no, he's- it's because he's retarded. You think he sings well. Yes. You got any, uh, you got it. You got to have him singing. I remember seeing one. I think him and, and Jackie uh, Gleason uh, sang a-, a duet or some shit. Singing <laughs> was such a big part of those dopey variety shows. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't stand that. Like, even as a kid, it was kind of funny when they'd have these comedians on and you'd watch it. And then, you know, the singing part would start. Anything your grandma liked on those variety shows was just terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, here he goes. Oh. Oh, here we go. (laughs) 
It's like just go through life singing everything you say and no one will think you're a retard. <laughs> I would like a pack of Tarrytons. <laughs> yeah, it's because he looked sounded like that and they'd be like, oh. Oh. oh, he's a great singer. Oh. <laughs> That's what they did with uh, that that old fat broad on America's Got Talent. That was the same bit where they'd be like, she walks out on yes. stage and they go, oh, this old hag can't sing. And then, oh, her voice is beautiful. It's the same old gag that they were using back in the fucking 40s. <laughs> I love it. Uh, you know, uh, earlier talking about the, the gun thing, it reminded me, uh, I, I watch uh, Mannix pretty much every Mitch. night on on me tv it's mannix and then cannon and barnaby oh, yeah. jones the trifecta of fucking detective shows <laughs> yeah yeah uh you got the womanizer the big fat fuck and then the geriatric uh, detective yes. uh, and mannix was constantly getting shot in the arm like he he, he yes. is every episode oh, he got shot in the arm and then he's able to still fight with a yes. bullet hole in his yeah, arm yeah like this is fucking uh, insane. It, it was always like you know the the villain, and then you see the hero get shot, and he's in slow motion <laughs> spinning around, yeah. and and, and uh, his partner is like, no, <laughs> and it's the overhead camera looking down. Yes. And and then in the next scene, he's got like this tiny Band-Aid on his forehead. Yeah, yeah, a little Band-Aid. He's, he's touching it a little. He's like, oh, yeah. yeah that was yes. a, you remember when I got shot in the head? That was a tough scene. <laughs> I, yeah, well, let's go out and get him now. What? <laughs> fucking... There was one. He got shot in the uh, side. Mannix got shot in the side with a deer rifle. And, uh, and he's just walking around. You know, I think it was the closest he ever came for, uh, to a gunshot killing him in an episode because it was like, wow, he needs help. But he was still fighting and running around yes, yeah. and shit. And meanwhile, his whole fucking side would have uh, been blasted out. His liver would have been gone. But, uh, yeah, that's I, I love those old shows. I can't get enough. I remember in some detective movie, it was like a girl detective. Uh oh. And there's a shootout. And you see her get shot and fall to the ground. And and this is supposed to be a dramatic line. He says, she's okay. The bullet only grazed her head. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll knock sense into that woman woman's head. Yeah, it just grazed her head. She'll be okay. Yes. Yeah. Because nothing, no head injuries. No, can... you never hear of a well, subdural oh, that's hematoma. The other thing. That's the other thing that drives me crazy, that you could take a brick <laughs> or the butt of a gun and slam it <laughs> on somebody's skull. And then they're out. And a few minutes later, they wake up, shake their head, yeah, yeah. and they're fine. Another one Mannix is famous for. He has more concussions in more episodes, <laughs> and he just gets up. Like, he'll sit up and go, oh, he's got to rub the back of his head. And then, oh, where am I? I got to call my secretary. Uh, that, uh, all the time. And, and from, like you said, bricks, the, the butt of a gun, uh, a club, anything. This guy... Massive amounts of concussions, and he's fine. He's Joe Mannix. He's, yeah, he'll be, they he'll get up. Okay. Yeah, they they rub their head, yeah. shake their <sighs> head a little bit, and then they're ready to go. You're not right, even, Joe. They don't even need an aspirin. Yeah, you're right, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be fine. I'll just a brick to my fucking head. <laughs> I fucking love that shit. Oh, oh, the other thing I love in in. If the if the bad guy has a gun on the good guy, the good guy can say, hey, you don't want to shoot me. You want to fight it man to man. And then, of course, the bad guy tosses his gun away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they're they're noble. These bad guys, they have yes. uh, morals, <laughs> there are rules and scruples, right? <laughs> there are rules. Yeah, 
Why don't we? Oh, you're real tough with that gun. But I think if yes. we fight it out man to man, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's enough. Also, they uh, they bad guys can be surprised very easily. That's another thing Mannix does. The guy will have the gun on him, and Mannix will just be there, like, ah, so uh, let me uh, let me see what you're looking for here. Let me see what you want. <laughs> and he throws some at him, and the guy is completely taken aback. He forgot what he was even doing there when a, a matchbook flies at his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plenty of time for Joe to, you know, jump on him and uh, duke it out. And I then can't get all enough. those shows like Mannix and uh, or uh, Starsky and Hutch, yeah, yeah. Any, they always they captured the villain or shot the villain <laughs> and there'd be commercials and then there would be a funny ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Alec Baldwin didn't even mean to kill somebody, as far as I know. And I'm sure he wasn't snickering a couple of minutes later uh, about, about something funny that happened. Yeah, they death does, didn't even affect those motherfuckers. They could kill someone, and then by the epilogue, <laughs> they'd be like, ha, ha, come on, let's go get some coffee. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> That was one one of the things. Even as a kid, I realized on Lost in Space was, uh, you know, Doctor Smith would constantly put the family's lives in peril, especially yes. young William. He like drag Will around and and uh, almost get him killed. And then at the end, they're like, "All right, come on, Smith, get back on the ship." Yeah, <laughs> you crazy motherfucker. And and then seeing uh, Mister Smith hang out with the little boy. Yes, he always was, loved uh, young William. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, wow! Yes, my young boy. Help me. Shut up, you clattering clunk of colliginous junk. Billy West used to do such a good fucking uh, Dr. Smith and the robot. And uh, what's his name? That The real prick. Who was the prick that was fucking Judy? Uh, made, made, it was a... Uh, uh, yeah. There was, uh, Wasn't that that puppet show? Major West. Fucking Judy. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking Judy, right? Yeah, Major West. Major West. Major West didn't like Smith. He'd have killed him if it wasn't for fucking uh, the rest of the, the the family, the Robinson family. And, and Jonathan Harris was a, a Jew from the Bronx. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he built, he created this whole persona for himself. <laughs> it's like this you know, Shakespearean actor. Oh, they always have that story. And if you watch some of the real old shows like The Outer Limits and The Twilight Zone has a few episodes, but even The Twilight Zone was a little too mainstream for that. It's like the peripheral, almost The Twilight Zone things that were going on around yeah, the same yes. time. You'll see all these fuckers show up in it, like acting their balls off. And then, you know, yes. I saw one with fucking, um, what's his name? Uh, Gilligan. And I was oh, like, yes. I'm like, oh, look at Gilligan. He's acting. He probably had these dreams and aspirations of being a big guy. And then there he was, Skipper, Skipper, <laughs> just dopey fucking Gilligan for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah, they would have those shows like One Step Beyond. Yeah, One Step Beyond was another one. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and and Outer Limits and uh, Yeah. And, and it always started with a narrative at the beginning cuz uh, uh, yes, you know, there is nothing wrong with your television. With your set. television set. We <laughs> have taken control of the horizontal hold and yeah. the vertical hold. It's like, oh, the guy knows, you know, he's figuring out my TV. Meanwhile, Rod <laughs> Serling had like uh, some profound shit and you know it had uh, to do with the episode and the one step beyond guy was even worse he would just come out trying to be all fucking scary one step beyond he and he didn't look look the part uh, those were and, really and, cheap and, yeah one step beyond were those that you looked at and go Whoa, what, what's good about this? Yeah, it was like yeah. like they didn't make the cut for the Twilight Zone. They were too bad. Yes. And they yes. put them on. What was the other one? Chiller or, or something with uh, oh, oh, Boris uh, Karloff? A thriller with Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff would be like, Ghost. do you it's believe in ghosts? <laughs> 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 and then he was in everyone. He was actually yes. an actor in the episodes and he talked to you. Like you were, you know, on st he was on stage and he was addressing the audience. And then he'd be the bad guy in, in an episode or something. Strange and, show. And when he'd do the long speech at the beginning, he'd end it with, 
but I assure you, it will be a thriller. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like like Serling had to be like in the Twilight Zone. You know, they had yeah. to say one step beyond. It was the same formula uh, for, for all those things. The Twilight Zone is the only one that really made it. And then he stops doing the Twilight Zone and starts doing the Night Gallery, which is exactly oh, it- like the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Yeah, except that it sucked the high it heaven. It sucked so bad. <laughs> it was just not good. And, and he'd, he'd start out in a gallery and pick out a painting that had something to do with uh, the episode. And uh, it just wasn't good. I can't believe that guy and, died and at like 50. I, rem- I know whenever a night gallery pops up on TV, I'll always think, well, maybe there was one good one that <laughs> no. got in by accident. No, no. <laughs> and it's like and when you watch Night Gallery now, it's like everything that was wrong with 70s television is in Night Gallery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Including Roddy McDowell. <laughs> 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 he was in everything in the 70s. Every fucking oh, thing. And, and also Night Gallery would have the blackouts like the uh, like the laughing, like a quickie. I think about 50 times they must have done one where a guy is dressed up as Dracula and he's in the blood bank. And that's the gag. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. You you speak. I love the fact that there's so many of these uh, networks and platforms now where you can watch just a marathon of these old shows and realize how fucking terrible they were. I got to be honest. I fucking, I watched uh, Ronan Martin's laughing. I watched a few episodes. I don't know whether it was the drugs, the time, the fucking, you know, (laughs) people trying to get away from the, the fucking atrocities of, of Vietnam, but it was just terrible. It it was not fucking funny. (laughs) Just old puns and and uh, uh, weakly veiled sex jokes that were supposed to be so cutting edge at the time, I guess. But, uh, oh, were they bad. And their staple bits like, uh, hey, we're going to the cocktail party, Dick. What do you say? Oh, okay. It was the, the, the typical team comedy thing. It was like Martin Lewis kind of a thing, the straight guy yes. and the wacky Dick well, Martin. Dan Rowan was an out-and-out out imitation of Dean Martin. Yes. The way he would hold a cigarette. Oh, and, and the uh, drink. Move and move his face around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Say goodnight, Dick. Good night, Dick. Get it? That's, that's fucking hilarious. And his name is Dick. How funny is that? Oh, God. It was terrible. It was painful to watch. I, I looked up their, their histories, and um, Dan Rowan was like a macho fucking fighter pilot in the war. And got shot down. He got burns over some percent of his body and everything. And then uh, he goes on to to be this straight guy. And um, Dick Martin was the one that was always after these minxy English uh, chicks that would be on the show, like um, like uh, Judy Carn and yes. and some of those. And he fucked his way through every every woman on that show. I think even Ruth Buzzy uh, got <laughs> got fucked by Dick Martin. <laughs> But it's and, just oh, terrible. I saw, you know how on the internet they have, you know, the sad life and tragic oh, ending. I oh, I watched all those. <laughs> yes. And and it's like they had the sad life and tragic ending of Henry Winkler. What? Who's still alive. He's alive. He's married with kids. <laughs> He's in a, in a <laughs> show called Barry that seems to be uh, pretty popular uh, online. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but I it reminded me of that because they had one on Judy Kahn and they kept calling her and it shows the research they put onto those shows because <laughs> they said and then from Bristol, England, Judy Carney. Oh. Ah. And they kept referring to her as Julie Carnet, and they referred to another cast member as Art Johnson. Oh, Artie Johnson, of course. Yeah. Art Johnson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, Judy Carn, yeah, her her tragic life was Burt Reynolds punching her in the fucking face. 
she was another one of the victims that had dated Burt Reynolds for a while when he was in his beat the shit out of women phase. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, that uh, that got. And then, and of back course, in uh, those days. He could beat the shit out of a woman and be, oh, that bird. Ah, uh, bird. You hear him laugh. It's hysterical. <laughs> He's uh, a character. There, there it is. She looks a little swollen there <laughs> under the <laughs> under the eye. <laughs> every fucking, every hair that he found in the sink that morning, he gave her one punch in the fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> little angry. That's her, uh, yeah, without any uh, makeup on or anything. She looked pretty good. I like that. You know, as a kid, it was kind of fun to watch them dance in their bikinis because it was uh, yes. it was pretty sexy um, to watch that as a kid, you know? Well, I remember, and this show came later on, but to me it was porn. And that was solid gold with the solid gold dancers. <laughs> solid gold dancers. That was out and out porn for me. <laughs> <laughs> Solid gold. Yeah, they would go over some of the songs and dances of the the week or something, and they'd uh, bring the dances out. And it was during, I think that was kind of the disco era, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so they were dressed in little scantily hot pants and uh, little bippy tops and shit. You get any? Let me see some <laughs> Solid Gold dancers. Yeah, look at that. I mean, Jesus Christ. Our countdown begins with the first top ten hit by an artist who started singing. And now, Tina Marie with Tina Lover Marie Girl. Number 10 with Lover Girl. <laughs> Coming in at number ten. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rick Dees. Rick Dees? The hey. disco duck guy? Hey, hey, it's star. Rick Dees with you. Now, wow. did Rick Dees have disco duck? Yes, Rick Dees was the disco duck guy. And, uh, yeah, he uh, a big hit with that. Oh, God, was that so bad. And then he tried to do uh, disco Rilla. <laughs> oh, yeah, he needed a follow-up to disco duck. So he did disco Rilla. And it was him dancing around, and the words were like, Disco Rilla, and you'd hear him go. Ooh, 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 ooh. It was <laughs> the worst B side ever. <laughs> Here it is. Here's Disco Rilla. Oh, the big follow up to Disco Duck by Rick Dees. Can you believe this? The same set they used for the Brady Bunch uh, variety show. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And he's got that porn actor look. Oh, the yeah. Mustache yeah, the mustache and the, and the hair. Wilding underwater doing the disco rilla. You got to get to the chorus because it sounds just like disco duck. The chorus sounds... Holy shit. How did he not hang himself backstage? Probably because he was fucking everybody on that set there. That, probably. Like but like Harry Disco Reed. Reed. <laughs> Harry Reed. Deep throat. Harry the Reed. Cut, the mustache. That was the porn look. Uh, Johnny the <laughs> Wad D's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, can you find? <laughs> They'll find anything. Uh, okay. Alan Thick, sweaty and hot. Oh, wow. All right. Is that the name of the song or you just want to find sweaty and hot? Yeah, sweaty no, and it's hot. my review. <laughs> sweaty and hot. Alan Thick, sweaty and hot. Oh, my and God. All right. It came out right around the time of. Let's get physical. Oh, and okay. I like muscles. Oh, here. here. Can you believe this shit? Look at that Eddie Munster hairdo he's got going. <laughs> How many AIDS deaths uh, are on that stage? <laughs> <laughs> nice jacket. Is that Adidas? He's got his Adidas jacket on or something. 
Yeah, those wasteland jackets. Yeah. Silk. <laughs> Satin jacket. He fancied himself a singer and songwriter. Yes. <laughs> He's another one that sang the theme song to uh, one of the sitcoms, I guess. Oh, yeah. He wrote then uh, 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 Facts of Life. The Facts of Life one. Did he sing that one, though? I think it was well, no, a woman. No, he didn't sing it, but I was on his talk show. Okay. For a while. And he wrote and sang the theme to the talk show, which went as right. follows. Right. Yes, that's Remember right. Don't leave the lane on a Monday road. Tonight, everyone needs some dream to hold on. I want to make it on my own. Running to get a night under the city lights. Running to get a night. <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, it's terrible. I love it. Oh. <laughs> he did have that fucking nasal tone to uh to his song. You, you got you got him uh, singing his talk show uh oh, I want to hear some of that. Even though I'm sure Gilbert just did a spot on impression of it. It sounded like the guy from the Gle Jackie Gleason show, the fucking <laughs> Cuz I did I did um a uh, celebrity wife swap with him. Oh, right. I remember I that. I would start imitating him singing to <laughs> her. And she was always saying, no, he doesn't sound oh that Oh, my way. God. Was she and then we looked it up on the internet, him singing Sweaty and Hot, and she said, oh, fuck, he does <laughs> sound that way. <laughs> then she blew me. <laughs> I'm teasing, of course. <laughs> Oh my God! Some of these people get so pompous they uh, they want to sing. They they fancy themselves a singer. And one of my favorites has always been Alice. Uh, the, the the theme to the song Alice. Um, what was her name? Linda. Oh. Was it Lo Lo oh. Linda uh, Linda Lavin? Lavin. Linda yeah. Lavin, she fancied herself one of these like Scooby Doo Bop Boop 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 one of these oh, jazz yes. singers, one of these lounge jazz singers, and she's like, "Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna sing the fucking theme song to this," and it's so fucking bad. She's so affected <laughs> when she goes, she's like, "Early to bed, early to rise." <laughs> it's all way over the top effect. There's a new girl in town, and she's looking good. Oh, yes. it's so bad. Oh, and speak. Oh, <laughs> here, here, here it is. Early to rap. Early to bed. Yeah. And in between, I cooked and cleaned and went out of my head. I'm sure 80 takes, and she's like, I could do it better. Life with blinders on, it's tough to see. I had to get up, get out from under and look. Jazzy ending. Oh, Alan Rafkin, that motherfucker was making a fortune back then. Holy shit, oh, was that and, bad? And what was, oh, Flo was the other Flo, waitress. He who kissed used to my say, grits. Kiss my grits. And that was like back then, the audience would go, ooh, how'd they get away with that? Wow. One? You know, yeah. by grits, she means her sweaty waitress asshole. <laughs> I think in she wants episode, you to lick her pussy. Six pieces. In one episode. But now, oh. we are going to cut our pies into eight pieces. <laughs> this is comedy. That's the big news that you have for us. No, yeah. I, I don't need to see any um, flow and fucking... <laughs> Terrible. It was uh, that was our entertainment, though. That's on a very all special Alice episode, uh, she actually does say, "Kiss my sweaty waitress asshole." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it didn't test well in front of the live audience. So they went to grits. Oh, oh God. He was he was in in uh you know, similar to the solid gold dancers. Do you remember when HBO before they had all their own programming would fill up the day with like a girls? Yeah. I think that was showtime. Uh, yeah. Showtime. Well, maybe, yeah. Used to have the, they, they were on rotisseries or something and, yes, and yes. they'd be on all fours, kicking their legs out. And that was porn. It, for, when you were oh, watching that, absolutely. a lot of camel toes, a lot of cleavage, and they were just, uh, hot girls exercising to kind of sensual, uh, porn music. Yeah. Where is that? You find some of that. <laughs> Look at the in camera effects. Yeah, you would be going through the channels and go, oh, I'll, I'll stop here. Watch yes. this for a little while. Look at that. You're just seeing her fuck. Look, look at this. You're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Adjust the tracking. <laughs> oh, nice. Come on, this way. Do the leg this way. Shit. Look at that. Oh, yeah, there oh, you go. She this, knows. This is called the dog piss. <laughs> nice ass. Holy shit. And it fucked oh, up. She's like 70 perfect. now. She's 70 years old now. I think. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that a shame? <laughs> oh, oh, she died 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Look at that great hair and everything. Like an actual woman. It's not cut all short and dyed purple. Fuck yeah. Oh, God. Look at this. And you just watch this. You have to keep the remote in your hand if your parents came downstairs. Unless it was your dad, then he'd be like, hey, what are you watching there, son? Why don't we jerk <laughs> off together? Do a family thing. God, that's yeah, hot. You, know. you could watch all day. You yeah, just yeah, yeah. You just put that on and enjoy yourself. Nice big <laughs> eye makeup she got on. That girl's, uh, yeah, you stick that ass in the air. Face down, ace up. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> I can't believe no, it. Showtime that had that? Yeah, Showtime had that. I remember uh, uh, it was before, I don't know, was, we used to watch something on Showtime every week on a weekend Saturday or something. It would come on before that or right after it. And that was, yeah, yeah, just leave it there. That's fine. Yes. Uh, just leave it there the whole rest of the fucking show and we'll be fine. You uh, you did a show, I guess, recently with uh, Svengoolie. Uh, yeah, well, no, that was a while it ago, was? but I think they showed it again. Yeah, yeah, I they showed it. it again. Okay. I popped up on that show a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool, all those old uh, movies and everything. And it's such what, it's such an old thing to have, like, the host of the horror uh, yes. movie thing. And I, the fact I that it's remember, still he's still doing it is hilarious. They, they used to be Zachary. Zachary, yeah. Hi, ooh, it's me, Zachary, and I'd like yeah. to show you some house paint. Like he would, he would sell, he would do commercials, but he was the scary guy. <laughs> That's kind of weird. <laughs> Zachary. Yeah, because yeah, I grew up on all those old monster movies. Oh they would yes, have on TV. please, I fucking loved all of them. They would, you'd look, check the TV guide when uh, you got it on Sunday. I know there's on Long Island, the Sunday Newsday had the the TV section, the TV guide, and you'd look through it every fucking night and afternoon. You'd look at the times and go, oh, yes. cool, Wednesday. You know, Creature from the Black Lagoon is on or Day of the Triffids or some fucking old old horror movie. Loved them. Or the, and even like the really, really crappy ones. <laughs> like they'd have the classics like Dracula and Frankenstein, but those really crappy ones like the hideous sun demon <laughs> they used to show. <laughs> when and what kind of monster him, was that? Yeah. When the sun hit him, he wound up to be like a bad imitation of the creature of the black. Lagoon. Oh, okay. I like how they, they had to do a twist on the werewolf where a full moon would get it. But this yes, one, it's yes. the sun. That seems like a real inconvenience. <laughs> at least the wolf man knew to lock himself up during the full moon. This guy and, just can't go out at all during and, the day. And that's the thing about the werewolf movies that I, I would always think like, uh, he'd say, you know, when the moon is full, I turn into a werewolf. 
and you go, oh, so that's like what three times a year? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, you can't fucking handle that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here you go. So this is the this is the guy. Yeah. Oh, that's it. All right. Up on the uh, terracotta roof there, and look at old girl. Oh yeah, look at that. He's still wearing his regular golf clothes. I like a monster wearing a fucking polo. <laughs> <laughs> For the well-dressed monster, we recommend Van Heusen slacks. <laughs> Look at him. And, and you know this was probably the director's house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's going to eat a rat. Oh, this is good. Look at his rubber arms and everything. It wrinkles yeah. up at the joints and it... So fucking funny. You know, practical effects are so much better. <laughs> That's great. He looked like a uh, creature from the Black Lagoon and uh, the Gorn from Star Trek. <laughs> he really kind of a mix of the two, oh, eating a rat. Oh, and there was another really shit horror movie <laughs> years ago that they were advertising that this is going to be the next classic monster <laughs> like Frankenstein, the Wolfman and all. And it was the, uh, see if you could find this, the Incredible Melting Man. Oh, shit. What the, what the fuck? It had to be radiation, right? It had to yeah, be something he, with a... He went, it was an astronaut. He goes into outer space and he's hit with some uh, outer space radiation. I think I remember this one. He's literally <laughs> melting, right? He's like, his face is melting and everything. <laughs> hey, where is this guy? All right, they're, they're pulling him up. It's in color. Who was that? Fucking Shirley Feeney? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Might be. I don't know. Yeah, this looks like uh, 70s. He's. He's pretty melted here. He doesn't look very harmful. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Ow. That's got a sting. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Just throw some salt on him. Well, don't pick at it. <laughs> what, he jerk off? <laughs> yeah, Jizz on him. That's it. Sort of uh, reminiscent of The Fly uh, later on, which was a, kind of a good movie. They really thought this was going to be a big hit, huh? Yes. There were some good ones that... Um, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's melting. <laughs> He's just melting away. The uh, There were some really good ones uh, that were incredibly bad, but, but fun to watch. Um, like, uh, what was it? The, the, the Crawling Eye... And, oh yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. And there were other ones with monsters that were so ridiculous. It's like just throw a blanket over the guy, we'll glue some fucking eyes on it and he'll run around like like a a, a guy with a blanket on, on him. Yeah. On on my podcast, Gilbert Gottfried's Amazing Colossal Podcast, uh we had on Roger Corman. Oh yeah, yeah. And Roger Corman made a film called The Beast with a Million Eyes. Yeah. And they finished the film, and then someone said to him, um, Roger, there's no beast <laughs> with a million eyes in this film. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think they got a tea kettle and punched holes in it and put a light bulb inside it, <laughs> and that was the beast with a million eyes. But he had finished the movie and had no yes. beast with a million eyes in yeah. it. Yeah. They, yeah, you'd think they, they would have noticed that early on. Yeah, yeah, it's the <laughs> title of the movie. Uh, I thought maybe it was more kind of uh, subjective, like, like uh, I don't know, like Big Brother would be the beast with a million eyes. You can't get away from it. It's watching you, but it's not literally a beast with a million eyes. I would have gone with that yeah. instead of a tea kettle <laughs> with holes in it. <laughs> what is, is that a beast? That's the beast. It doesn't seem to have a million eyes. He's no. got a sparkle. He looks like one of the uh, solid gold dancers. It's all <laughs> disco and sparkles. 
<laughs> That's a funny face, more than scary. I don't know. Don't you see the fangs there? <laughs> All right. That's pretty dangerous. But uh, yeah, some of the, 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 the movies, uh, there was one, I, I know they were trying to rip off Godzilla. So they, they oh, made. Oh, they had Gorgo. Gorgo was, was the English them. Godzilla, the English uh, version of Godzilla from England. Uh, and he had like fl- fins for ears and it just wasn't as scary as, uh, as Godzilla. And then King Kong, they decided to do Mighty Joe Young. Yes. Uh, which is, you know, another crazy ape movie. But, uh, yeah, the ripoffs, it'll happen. And then there's uh, and- there's this one where a Hollywood star shoots the director and cinematographer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. I hope people don't start ripping off. <laughs> Gilbert, uh, you are such a, a fun guest to have on the show. I, I love having you on, man. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried. Gilbert Gottfried's amazing, colossal podcast. Uh, it's so fucking good, so funny, and really interesting, uh, especially if you're into some of the uh, older movies and TV shows and whatnot. That's anywhere you find your, your finer podcast. You can book Gilbert for a cameo. The Gilbert's a perfect person for cameo. Some people get cameo. And it's like, who the fuck? What? But Gilbert's so recognizable. <laughs> the, the, the voice and everything is fantastic. Cameo.com slash Gilbert uh, Gottfried. And then uh, for a personalized video and shout out, of course. Uh, Gil- Real Gilbert on Twitter, Real Gilbert on Instagram, and GilbertGottfried.com on uh, his website. Gilbert, thank you so much, man. Always thank a pleasure. You. We'll talk to you again soon. There goes Gilbert. God, is he funny. Oh, I love it. it. Just makes me laugh my balls off every fucking time. It's so ridiculous. Uh, I love it. And we talk about shit that no one knows what the fuck we're talking about. Half of the stuff we're we're fucking talking about. But I don't give a shit. Funny. His episodes have been great. They finally got Gabe Kaplan on. Oh, they did. Man, he's got some fucked up stories from his time uh, doing stand up comedy. Uh, meeting Dice before he was Dice. Yeah. Um, oh wow. Dealing with the the, the Borscht Belt. Yiddish comics and stuff like that. All the we should be able to get him. I can try. Yeah, yeah. I know get they were him. trying for a while, and they finally got him. But oh my god, him with the uh, uh, the the Battle of the Network Stars stuff, the uh, celebrity poker things that yep, he does. All that. Welcome back, Cotter. All all that shit. His stand up. Yeah, yeah. That'd be uh that'd be an awesome guest. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Him, Kevin, our buddy Kevin Pollock. And mm. the thing is, too, a lot of the his roster of guests have been dying off over oh, the God, years. Oh, God, yeah. So they got, uh, they've been getting the kids and the grandkids. So they had uh, Jack Lemon and Walter Matthau's kids on telling stories and everything. Uh-huh. So when his guests all die off, he just gets the family. He gets the family. That show will never end. It's so fantastic. That's, uh, it is great. I, I, I saw him do it live one day. Um, I think it was at Caroline's years ago. And it was him and uh, Artie Lang were on it was one of the funniest fucking live things i've ever seen in my life it was so fucking good yeah do you know he's still constant because they don't play anything of his time on howard yeah yeah Gilbert. um so anytime stupid. they do those polls and stuff like who's your favorite recurring stern guest Gilbert. whatever he's never an option on their voting thing of course but then everyone in the comments is like why don't you have gilbert on yeah here? why don't you have pen Gillette on here because they were the best guests. They, they were the had. best fucking guests. When you heard Gilbert was going to be on, you knew no work was <laughs> getting done. Two hours that was two they hours. They weren't getting the news yeah. done. They were getting anything done. Nothing was getting done, and you weren't getting anything done on the job site you were at because I would sit in the van and just laugh my ass off. There was you. It's like, oh, I should leave and do that. Yeah. That is not happening. Yep. Uh, this is hilariously funny. There was no way to get it on demand or anything. You had no. to wait for a best of to even think you might hear it again. So I wasn't going to miss that. And those were the fucking... days Howard on was going past 11. Oh, before he was syndicated, when he would go, sometimes it would be creeping up on Even noon. when he was. Like some of the stations would cut out, but oh, he'd yeah, still yeah. be on because he can't get Gilbert and Artie to shut up <laughs> yeah. on there because they would still be doing Seinfeld jokes and Dirty Groucho oh, Marx. Oh, God. And, and yeah, Dracula. Dracula. <laughs> Gilbert's Dracula impression. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. I love him, man. I love having him on. That was a, a pleasant surprise for even me. I didn't know he was going to be on today. That's awesome. Fucking love it. Gilbert Godfrey. Ah, yes. Uh, before we uh, talk about the events of the weekend and whatnot, I want to talk about something very important. Of course, prepare with Compound Media. No one can predict the future. It's hard uh, not to see that the future of America is looking worse. Yes, each day. 
everything financially, gas prices are through the fucking roof, food is through the roof. President doesn't even know what the fuck he's doing. Uh, it's a clusterfuck, I like to call it. And if you're observant of these things, you got a feeling something bad is uh, in the works. Sooner than later, things are going downhill, and uh, here's what you got to do. You can hope for the best, but you best prepare for the worst. Do you have enough food, water, and other essentials to get you through tough times? Those are the two most important things, aside from air. And if you run out of that, you know, sorry. <laughs> uh, check out preparewithcompoundmedia.com. We partner with the nation's number one preparedness company to get you uh, the things that you need to be prepared for whatever comes down the road. Right now, you can save 25% off their popular four-week emergency food kit. Going to keep you well-fed. With four weeks worth of breakfast, lunch, dinner, drinks, and snacks totaling over 2,000 calories a day. And the food stays fresh for up to 25 years in uh, proper storage. So uh, it's going to be there when you need it. There you go. What else do you need to know? You put it somewhere, and if the shit hits the fan, you are prepared. You might need it sooner than uh, later. So uh, don't wait. Go to preparewithcompoundmedia.com. Claim your four-week emergency food kit. You're going to save 25% if you act now. That's preparewithcompoundmedia.com. Don't wait. Do it uh, this moment. Right now. I'll wait. Go ahead. I'm waiting for them to order. I don't want them to miss any of the show. So, I'm kidding. Why would I do that? I was showing like kidding. Uh... Spoke of it with Gilbert a little bit, but the uh, the Alec Baldwin thing is just ridiculous. Uh, if you've been on uh, Venus and you don't know what's going on, he's filming a movie called Rust. Uh, he's uh, one of the producers and actors in the movie. Uh, it's uh, a Western, which involves firearms. Six shooters, I would gather. 45 caliber Colt Western six shooters. And um, there was a mishap of some sort on the set where a loaded gun got in the hands of uh, an actor, Alec Baldwin, and he fired that loaded gun at the cinematographer. It went through her and hit the director who was standing right behind her, injuring him, killing her. He says he was handed a hot gun. Uh, he was told it was a cold gun. He was told it wasn't loaded, all, uh, but it seems like a lot of the safety um, precautions and rituals that are supposed to be adhered to were broken. Uh, when you get handed a weapon on set or off set, quite frankly, you, you're supposed to know the condition of that weapon, whether it's hot, whether it's not loaded, what's it loaded with. Is anything obstructing the barrel? All this stuff. In movies, there's an armorer, they're called, or a weapons master. And they're supposed to make sure of all this. But they also are supposed to make sure that they train the actors in weapon handling, regardless of what it is. A sword, a pistol. Their job is to make sure no one gets hurt on the set when they're using uh, real weapons. A prop gun is just a prop because the word is property. It's a gun that is part of the production, part of the, one of the things that have to be used during the production. Most of the times, if they're firing them, they are real guns. They just put blanks in them, and you got to make sure no one's in the way of the barrel that's going to get hit with any debris from the blank, uh, any obstructions in the barrel, things like that. Those shots are usually made at the camera at some angle or whatnot. When you're seeing someone shoot, they're shooting at the camera or close to the the camera crew, and that camera crew is usually protected with some kind of plexiglass. And uh, again, they make sure nothing is, is obstructing the barrel. But sometimes you get unburnt gunpowder that can uh, speckle somebody or a piece of the wadding or, you know, whatever. Maybe a piece of the crimped brass at the top. You just don't want to fuck around like that. Um, this was, from what I hear, a live round which has no place on the movie set at all. Uh, another thing I heard is they were doing target practice, just fucking around with the prop guns using real ammo, doing some target shooting during off hours. And uh, the live ammo was being stored with the uh, blanks. And uh, the guns that they were supposed to be using on set were being used to fire real bullets. So a lot of shit's going on there. Uh, 
Alec Baldwin didn't check the gun after it was handed to him. And that he's supposed to do. That's his responsibility to check the gun. It wasn't during a take that the director and cinematographer were shot. It was after cut was yelled and Alec Baldwin pointed the gun at the cinematographer and pulled the trigger. I think he was joking. Uh, it fired, killing her and injuring the director. So to say it was a, a malfunction isn't true. The gun functioned exactly like it was supposed to. It fired and killed someone. Uh, Alec Baldwin, of course, bears some responsibility in that. <laughs> the prop master really bears some responsibility, the weapons master. This, again, was some... It was the daughter... Here it is. Player TikTok. It's awesome. That's just a still. Oh, it's a still. <sighs> She's the daughter of a weapons master, an armorer that had been on some very popular movies with a lot of gunfire in them, like John Wick and shit. So she's the daughter of this guy. And apparently through nepotism or what have you, she gets on this set. She was on another movie with, um, who the fuck was in that one? Nick Cage and... Opie's brother, not Greg Opie Hughes, you know, the other Opie, Ron Howard. It was Clint Howard and Nicolas Cage. What's more tragic, the shooting or the fact that Clint Howard and Nick Cage made a Western? <laughs> I think that's a little more tragic. So uh, the daughter, 24-year-old daughter of a veteran armorer. I mean, at 24, daughter, she should be an apprentice. She should be in charge of... Uh, any of this and it's obvious she shouldn't because she fucked up uh, what i'm hearing is she's supposed to be the one that makes sure the guns aren't loaded then it went through some protocol that that she's supposed to be the one that hands the actors the guns and verifies that it's unloaded the actor then double verifies that it's unloaded and the barrel's clear the producer or one of one of the producers was the one that came over and took the gun off of the cart. There were three guns on a cart outside of this church set that they were using. The producer came, took one of the producers, picked up one of the guns and handed it to Alec Baldwin. Told him it's a cold gun. No one checked it or anything. And it's not even his job to hand this motherfucker the gun. And uh, like I said, Alec Baldwin... Um, after, here's the, the story that isn't confirmed, but from what I hear, it sounds like something Alec Baldwin would do. Uh, they yelled cut, wanted to do another take. Alec Baldwin supposedly said, uh, another take, fuck it, fuck you. How about I just shoot you and then pull the trigger and, and shot. <laughs> so, uh, that's not a malfunction again. It's not a, it, it, it is an accident in that I don't think he meant to shoot anybody, but it was uh, definitely avoidable. And uh, he does bear some responsibility there. Uh, there he is afterwards on the phone, probably to his lawyer. Hey, hook a motherfucker up. I just shot somebody. Who do I got? He needed a homeboy to say he did it. He's one of the brothers. Like they get keep in the car when they find a gun in your vehicle. It's the guy that cops the plea. No, Alec didn't do that shit. That was me. I'll do the time. So uh, that's, that's the story. Now it goes to, you know, who's responsible. And of course, the outcry now from Hollywood uh, and people to say that why are guns used on sets? Why do they have real guns on a set when they kill people and stuff? Like I was telling Gilbert, how many thousands upon thousands of movies have been made that use guns and haven't? had any troubles and i'm talking epics look at movies like saving private ryan <laughs> there's a, a lot of fucking guns going off in, in that one uh westerns where you got a fuckload of uh rounds firing okay corral type things type movies tombstone it's more authentic it's possible to do it with cgi but uh, you get the muzzle flash from a blank. You get a little bit of kick so the actor knows uh, when his hand is, is pushed back. You get the smoke. There's smoke that happens with fucking uh, guns. And, and I think just for the fact of the atmosphere in a gunfight, 
hearing that ba boom boom boom, it it gets you. It gets you wound up. I think uh, if someone's shooting and you have to take cover, it makes it a little more imperative uh, as an actor. You know what you're supposed to do when you hear that. It's kind of hard, you know, when someone's just going click, 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 and then we'll put in the bang and everything else later. So anyway, um, I think that's why they do it for authenticity. So uh, I, I guess we'll see what what happens. Um, a lot of people coming to uh, <clears throat> Alec Baldwin's defense. Uh, the crew from The View, of course. The View. The View girls have an opinion. And we need to hear it. So uh, here's them defending Alec. A lot of questions Alec. following the tragic shooting death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set fat, of Whoopi. Alec oh Baldwin's God. She's movie. been fat for a while. People want to know Hello. how I'm a Alec live Baldwin. weapon I, could I end kill up... People. Sorry. Oh, are we... Uh, in Baldwin's uh, hand. The same prop gun had misfired on the set before. And the AD who handed him the gun, apparently, uh, was previously accused of being lax on safety measures. And right before the tragedy, union members walked off the set for poor working conditions. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of folks to point at. Uh, it, but the question is, is who's responsible here? Well, I have a question for you, Wolfie, okay. because out of this group, Ooh. I think you're going to have the most experience <laughs> on a movie set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How? Why do we use real guns on movie sets when you can do CGI? We can make dinosaurs. We can I just make told a you. lightsaber. You can do anything, but they're using guns that could... It's crazy. It, I, I don't know. It feels so antiquated. Did you? Were you on sets with guns? Yeah. But there shouldn't be live huh. ammunition in Well, there. that's the difference. Right? You don't... You know, when you at least when I was doing it. You know, you had a person whose job it was, that was Ghost. their job. Only that. And so Jumpin Jack they Flash. checked the weapon, they would bring it to you and show you that it was Little empty. rascals. Mm -hmm. In the habit? Uh, and they would come and say to you, okay, come, we're putting one squib and watch us do this so you know. Gun is empty, we're putting one thing in. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, you're good to go now. Because you don't use bullets on a set. Right. Because they kill people. So when they say live ammunition, it could mean like a blank or something that went wrong? Like what, because... Well, live ammunition, I think, really refers to something coming out of the gun. Mm, if something okay. is coming out of the gun, that's live ammunition. So it could um, be like a rubber bullet. Yeah. I mean, I think what, what an made idiot. me really surprised was over it's the no weekend rubber I heard bullet. that the armorist, the person who was doing what Do they honestly saying, think they're shooting rubber bullets at each other? Was about her own ability. She Gretchen said a quote Carlson. in a podcast, she almost didn't take a job because she didn't think she was ready for the job. Yeah. And, and oh. she should not have been on the set as far as... If we'll be speaking I've some read truth here. Is correct. That's not. The I'll person. give it to her when that she's would right. Not have been the person you want. To, when it comes to handling guns and live uh, anything, that it could be the squibs. You remember? Yeah. Uh, you just you need an expert. Yeah. You can't. You know, a, a newbie should be the assistant to the old bee. I was just saying. And they had an incident on October 16th where the, uh, the stunt double for Alec Baldwin mm -hmm. accidentally shot, and they, it was mm -hmm. supposedly a cold weapon as well. So th there were Jeez. other incidents before this, Broad's and there were things reported. Piece of shit. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of miscommunications on maybe in mm -hmm. places, or someone doesn't elevate a concern because they don't think it's that big of a deal. But sadly, when you look back in hindsight, there were a lot of red flags leading up to this moment. I don't think someone there. had walked off the set beforehand. Yeah. Right? yeah, because of safety concerns. Listen and to these cackling what hens. I, Sorry, I, what, what I can tell you is that ugh. the reason you don't hear about this often <laughs> is because it doesn't, it's, it does not happen often. See, there you go, another thing. Whip, Whippy is just fucking, yeah. I didn't watch this, this whole clip. This is why you yeah. don't want to get rid of a whole lot of regulations. Because there you go. A little rascal does Whoopi look, look like right now with that hair. Um, so buck you have to pay buck attention buck to this, you know. This no buckwheat. This is going to go on until someone has a... You know what I, what I think is terrible is, here, here is that, um, and I, I, I'm sure you know Alec pretty well. I've met him a few mm -hmm. times. Uh, um, I'm I know sure him. he's distraught over this. It's been reported that he's inconsolable. Yeah. 
Um, you know, it, it certainly wasn't intentional. And there were all these ghouls that sort of came out over the weekend attacking him, like Lauren Boebert and, and of course, Donald Trump Jr. and, and, and a few people, um, <laughs> you know, say, saying just terrible things about him during this time. I mean, a woman died here, a woman who Yeah, a he mother, killed her. Who, um, you know, a, <laughs> yeah. a, a wife, a, someone who was... As they say just wonderful at her craft, a cinematographer. Mm -hmm. She had a little more meat on her bones. The director probably would have been fine. People like that. Skinny broad. Out, Bullet went um, right through her. Trying to, I don't know, take some sort of opportunity and a shot Troll. at Alec Baldwin. Yeah. I, I, I thought that was yeah. pretty disgusting and despicable. You want me to do that? Oh, or are you going to do it? I have a legal note. All right. Excuse me. The film's production company said in a statement, though we were not made aware of any official complaints concerning weapon or prop safety oh. on set, we will be conducting an internal review of our procedures while production is shut down. We will continue to cooperate with the Santa Fe authorities in their investigation, offer mental health services to the cast and crew huh. during this tragic yeah, time. Yeah, Alec Baldwin the needed mental help uh, uh, he long did before not this. Know there were live rounds in the gun. Yep. But he pointed it at well. a woman and pulled the trigger anyway. And that's why uh, it's despicable. Uh, like, regardless, if, if 20 people checked that gun and told Alec Baldwin that it was not loaded and Alec did not check it himself mm -hmm. and then further points it at someone and pulls the fucking trigger... I'm sorry, you are culpable. There is th that's a problem. And if Donald Trump Jr. wants to fucking make jokes about it uh, and put out a T-shirt that says "Guns don't kill people," uh, Alec Baldwin kills people. It's available on his website. Yeah, it's like the. Hey, what are you gonna do? It's crazy. Yeah, it's. All, I, I find a lot of these like very anti-gun leftists. Yeah. Like these, these are the people that are the the most irresponsible with guns. They've never touched one. Always. They've never seen one. They're like, oh. And these are the people that don't practice good gun safety because they just yes they are oblivious. They they can be oblivious to it all. It, I've noticed this for fucking for years. Every anti-gun person. They they manage to be the most uneducated people about guns, and that's why we laugh at them when they sound stupid when they're talking about guns, because they don't know what they're talking about. They're fearful of them. They, they're so afraid to even touch them or uh, know what they're all about. There was one, one reporter once talked about shooting an AR-15, talking about it like, it felt like an explosion in my face, and... Yeah, explosion in your fucking face. It's like, no, the ARs actually have, like, less blowback yeah, yeah. than other guns. And then the, there was a video of a little girl shooting it. And yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is so fucking difficult to shoot an AR-15. Uh, they just don't know anything about it. They don't know about the ammunition. They don't know the mechanics of how it works. They don't know an automatic from a semi-automatic, a fucking... Um, uh, single action, double action, a uh, clip from a magazine, uh, different types of ammos. They just don't understand it, and they don't want to. They just want to eliminate anyone's ability to, to use a gun to protect themselves um, and exercise their Second Amendment right. That's it's crazy. It. it is. It's fucking stupid. Eric Trump, I was the speaker. Uh, I went to this like medical freedom conference mm. in Nashville this past weekend. I saw really, some pitches. Really neat. Like Kristen Davis, who's, I know she's not just one of Roger Stone's publicists, but like she also is sort of like one of his handlers. And yeah. she was like, come do a Handler. media booth. And then I ran into that guy that like, I think he was upset. I didn't know who he was, but it was like this radio guy. What was his name? Something cow. Oh, man, man cow. cow. And he's like, I'm man cow. Oh, you work for Gumia? Like, tell him I say hi. And I'm like, I'm like, how do you spell man cow? And he's like, uh, oh, really? And I was like, oh god. Oh, uh, uh, re really, really? Yeah, I hadn't heard. Hi, I'm man cow. Man cow Mueller. How you doing? That's exactly how he sounded. Hey, uh, turd, turd. <laughs> it was his sidekick, turd. Hilarious. Yeah. We shared an agent for a while. Oh, cool. Robert Eatman. Yeah, Bob Eatman. Hey, uh, Bob, Bob. Could you get me another gig in Chicago? <laughs> yeah. So I know, man, man cow. Okay. Was he nice to you? He was nice. Oh, good. He, was a, he seemed a little upset. I didn't know who he was. Yeah, that would be something man cow or Opie would be like. <laughs> Oopsie. Um, yeah, I got to bring like Roger Stone to the bathroom. I was like in his posse. He gets <laughs> stopped constantly. Yeah. He does, right? 
Yeah, he's got such energy, though. He's such an amazing speaker. Is he wearing one of his own shirts? Like, free yes, yeah, 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 yeah. He like, was. He loves wearing shirts with his own name on it. <laughs> yeah, it was great. And so I, I got, I've never done a media booth at a convention before, so I ordered this big, like, rollout banner. Yeah, I and, saw. Uh, I was doing, like, live streaming. Very from, cool. And I was also, like, live streaming the speeches, and then I, like, got in trouble for live streaming. I didn't know that they were, like... Doing it like you know to sell to their members or whatever. Oh, gee. And then Eric Trump was the keynote speaker on one of the nights, and he was just saying like, yeah, the the Trump kids or anybody, you know, in his posse has to be like twice as good because yeah, because you know, they're looked at with the microscope, and and if there's anything bad, they're gonna blow it out of proportion, and if there's nothing bad, they'll make up bad stuff. So yeah. It's not like, uh, you know, they don't get the privilege of being like Hunter Biden, where no. you could be a, a world-renowned degenerate. Artistic crackhead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the media just refuses to touch it. It's it's really astounding. Hey, oh, Roger Stone did nothing us. wrong. That's the one. His teeth are so white. Yeah, yeah. They got to be, you know. hypnotized by them. They got to be uh, laminates or Chiclets. something. Yeah. Chiclets or maybe full plates. I don't know. I don't know what people uh, do. It was really cool. There were so many patriots at this thing. Of course, MAGA. Of course, like hippies. Uh, but um, and you then didn't, of course, you didn't insurrect something. No, no. The, I was there. I was strictly business. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not like the sixth when you were insurrecting. Of course, no. I wasn't. <laughs> Hopping on any uh, construction buildings. <laughs> no, no, no. But it was neat, and there was like a lot of religious people there too. But like, you can see how all these people come together over "let us do what the fuck we want, leave us alone." Like that's the overall theme. Isn't that amazing that that's a thing? That that is something you need to scream out loud. Just leave us alone to do what we want to do, and and not even say with outside the boundaries of of the laws that we've agreed upon that adhere to the Constitution and your rights. But that you have to say, just leave us the fuck alone to to succeed in this country, to use the the abilities that we have, and and use the opportunities of America to just make the best life for me and my loved ones or what have you. That 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 is that it's even a thing that has to be mentioned is fucking psychopathic. Mm -hmm. But and I I do like the fact that there are things going on like that. Um, that uh, you go to and, and, you know, and they are very, people are very uh, passionate about it and uh, tight, you know, there's a tight group. And th they're so fucking lucky that for the most part, we're very law abiding. Yeah. And want to use the system properly to, you know, get what we want from, from uh, the government, which is leave us alone, like we were saying. But, um, you know, you look at Antifa and you look at a lot of lefties and shit and it's all about... Black Lives Matter. It's like burning shit down and rioting and stuff. Yeah. And then you get together and have intelligent conversations and and these seminars and speeches and shows that are intelligent. They're put on by people that have thought things out and have a great debate for these people. But, you know, if we decided to get destructive, oof, oof. Yeah. Like the right or whatever, conservatives always have to be like the bigger person. We can't yeah, stoop to yeah. their level, but like sometimes I get a little bit sick of that. I do too. Like, I mean, there's no accountability. You know, remember stupid Hillary and and uh, Michelle Obama was like, when they go low, we go high. And it's like, first of all, we don't go low. We go low on you because you're a piece of shit. Yeah, Michelle, like, your balls go low. Yeah, your balls hang low. They wobble to and fro. <laughs> Can you tie him in a knot? Can you tie him in a bow? bow? I remember that. Can you roll him up, throw him on over your, your shoulder like, like a continental, continental soldier? soldier. <laughs> this protected. is the stuff I remember, not like important names. No, no, names, names dates, days. things like that. But uh, it doesn't seem to matter. Really neat. So this uh, conference was. I'll have another one. You, you want anything? Together. No, I'm good. Put together by the. Their names are Charlene and Ty Bollinger, and I guess one of them had like six people in their family die from cancer. So now. Jeepers. Also, at speaking at this event, were like a lot of censored like scientists and doctors who were like speaking out about the vaccine and yeah. like the, so heavily censored, like Judy Mikovits and Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, and they're all talking about like like what's really what's really in there, and it's it was really eye opening. Oh, and somebody gave me this special hydrogen water bottle. It makes it puts hydrogen bubbles in water. <laughs> you just fill it up with water, and then you push a button, and it makes bubbles. I I. I'm fascinated. Yeah. Now this... 
how does it do this? It, it takes I guess batteries, it has a obviously. Machine in here. It takes batteries. It's rechargeable. I think it's some kind of electrolysis. It's rechargeable. It's got a little machine in there that makes hydrogen bubbles. And it's supposed to be good for inflammation and health. Retail value, $150. Your girl got it for free. Inflammation. It, it deals with inflammation. Like a little lava. Now, lava. here's, here's, <laughs> here's the, the issue. Um, hydrogen is amazingly explosive. So really? each one of those little bubbles getting to the top and popping, doesn't it leave a hydrogen pocket at the top that could be... Uh, explosive potentially, or is it vented at the top? I don't remember seeing anything like that in the pamphlet. <laughs> also, like hydrogen as an element doesn't really exist. It's very rare without being attached to yes, water and stuff like that. Them, but but in the water, because H two O through this electro electrical electrolysis, it is separating hydrogen from the water. Are you sure there's not something in it that's just going? <laughs> It's called Alka Seltzer. <laughs> I think there's an Alka Seltzer tablet. It's a small seltzer machine. In the bottom. <laughs> uh, does it taste any different? Um, no, it tastes the same. Yeah. But I'm gonna keep drinking it and see if I get better as a person. I don't know, smarter, funnier. <laughs> what about hydrogen with um, more electrons? And you can make heavy water, and you can make a hydrogen bomb. Oh. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, I'm fascinated. Yeah, it's like a it's got to be vented at the top. Well, it's got to be three minutes till it beeps when it's over, and then you drink it. But I can you can look at it when it's when it's done with its little cycle. I mean, I can't see each one of those little bubbles amounting to much, but maybe you know they go to the top and and. <laughs> I need uh, I need a, a chemist. <laughs> they sell like really big ones for like your whole house, but they're like very expensive. This is how they would make fuel, by the way, hydrogen fuel um, out of water. But it, wow. it it takes so much energy to make enough hydrogen that it's not economical enough because the, there's quite the supply of water around. And if you could separate the hydrogen from it uh, easily and cheaply, you could use that for energy to power anything. But like I said, that battery that's in there making that is making a lot more is using a lot more power than whatever hydrogen it's making could be used to to power something. Like a person. Like a person. You <laughs> powering yourself with the miracle of hydrogen. That's I pretty cool. Cute. I what put, a good gadget. And it could be a vibrator. Yeah. A hydrogen. Yeah. You put hydrogen up your pussy. Maybe if I become an affiliate, I can submit Suggestions. Yeah, other suggestions. So it's ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> Smells good. Does it smell like uh, after a rain? I don't know. I like it. It tastes <laughs> good to me. Yeah? Yeah. With some vodka? Can you hydrogenate vodka? <laughs> I didn't feel like it, my tits got bigger suddenly. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> You'd see those things flying off the shelves. <laughs> Give them to your wife. For yeah. Christmas. Drink out of this, sweetie. Yeah. The hydro tit master. Oh, what's, did, did someone uncap this for me? And then realized, like, I like playing the toss game? All right. Ready? I did this Thursday. And I just casually went, whoop, and it went right fucking in the gap between the window and the padding. This is wow. my new game. And, uh, and they didn't have it on video. Oh, Because it was no. very casual. Now the pressure's on, now it's a and I'm going to miss. This is a segment. All right, here no. we go. Oh, I think I'm just going to anyway. lackadaisically throw a cab right there. Oh, uh, it bounced out, but it was close. I need a little more altitude, a little more arc. All right. Well, that's pretty cool fucking uh, weekend. Yeah, it's fun. I was talk talking to compound media, talking about compound media to everybody. That's good. Do you know Kristen Davis? She was like the Manhattan madam. I think she provided... Women for Elliot Spitzer. Or Elliot something. Spitzer, the, the, that I think thing. He her was and Laney client might have, number nine or something. Have, like worked together. Mm. She knew all about compound media. I think that's why she hooked me up with this oh, media cool. table. Oh, awesome! Yeah, and you're the perfect person. It was fun. You know a lot about what the fuck is going on with all this horse shit, and uh, you're 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 pleasant on the eyes. Oh, I like someone like Gino there yelling and fucking with his dumb headband. I should have taken a picture. They were they were selling shirts that they were just black with like big white letters. COVID is a scam. Ah, and I was like, I wish I had had his like lamb you know stickers. Like Did you see the picture of the guy that uh, threw paint on the uh, George Floyd statue? That uh, one guy from before, the one who yeah yeah, I guess they skateboard. caught him. Oh. They caught him and and there's a picture of him and I swear it looked like Gino. 
he had a headband on and everything. I think I retweeted it. Guy's a hero. Put, if you go to there, I put Gino. Um, if you, not me. I mean, apartment boss. Right. He tweeted it because he he's very funny, and I would follow him. No. <laughs> no. It wasn't the picture. It was a picture from uh, the front where you see. Uh, it's a little a little side picture. Uh, it's got like the statue, stupid George Floyd head, and then uh, a little picture on the side. I thought I tweeted that, but that's okay. Have you ever lost okay. luggage anytime you've flown? No. Uh, I had put jinx. all of my laptops and podcasting stuff in this one bag, checked it. And so I flew from Nashville to D.C. and then D.C. to um, Westchester Airport. Uh -huh. I like that one because it's small. It's like, I don't Oh, okay. But whatever. So my freaking bag, like, it had all my podcast stuff in it, both, like, both laptops, everything. And they're like, oh, it just didn't leave Nashville. It's just still there. How do you... So I'm like, what that? the fuck? I'm like, don't I get a coupon? Isn't anybody going to, like, give a shit? Is anybody going to be like, we're really sorry? Nope, sorry. Here's we're anything. Sorry we're not sorry. Yeah. We apologize for not being sorry that we lost your luggage. Uh, did you get it back? It's literally like just jam packed with the most valuable shit I own yeah. in my whole yeah. life, you know? But it's supposed to supposedly come to the house. I don't know. Someone's going to bring it. And, yeah. <sighs> That's so different. odd. Like, girls, especially. Sorry to, you know, lump you in with, with girls, but uh, they sure do take a lot of stuff on weekend trips. Well, this was all just gear and equipment. It was oh. like tripods. It was a microphone. It was a ring light. So it was too much for carry on. Yeah, it was so heavy. It's just like I don't know. Yeah, it's just so yeah. Heavy. I am just uh, Mister Carry On. I can yeah. pack for a week in my just my carry on because the thought of standing at that stupid carousel and waiting with the dregs that were just in the back of the plane. Can't have it. Oh, you missed your bag. Ooh. Usually yeah. when you're first class, they uh, put a priority tag on your bag. Ooh. And that usually comes out first. But I just don't like... Uh, Fancy life. Having to go there. I like going right out. Yeah. I've never oh, been to first class. There it is. Class. See, it's Gino. Look, he's got a headband. Oh, yeah. You got That's Gino. Gino has... Uh, yeah, I feel like he'd be friends with Gino. Yeah. You know, did something bad to the statue. Good for him. <laughs> I don't care. <clears throat> They're changing the name of the Audubon Society. You know the bird thing, the Audubon Society? Oh, yeah. They're changing the name because uh, Audubon was a slave owner. But isn't the name, isn't the Audubon also like a big highway in Germany? The Autobahn. <laughs> I think it's spelled differently than the Audubon Society. Really? Yeah. Huh. But they uh, decided they're going to... Uh, yeah, they're going to change the name because, again, it's like things were named after people from that time. And everyone owned slaves back then. It was the thing to do. And, and, and now to, to change the names of everyone because they were just wow. doing everything that people did back then. This is enraging. And then people completely turn a blind eye to, like, the real sort of, like, Nazis Audubon. who have infiltrated, like, the fucking CIA, the FBI, Fauci. Yeah. It's like we're we're totally ignoring everybody who's actually committing crimes against Right, humanity. committing crimes. Maybe, you know, in 100, 200 years, they'll be taking their names off of things when they realize they poison children. And uh, You know, they were supposed to, like, within the last couple of days, like, this weekend, release Trump. Like, if he had, you know, still been in office, he had planned oh. to release the documents on JFK yes. being killed like uh, by an inside job like that was supposed to come out yeah really recently and then uh, Biden Biden put the kibosh, kibosh on, on it. it yes until what next year when they'll just never. do it again they'll <laughs> yeah. never like what could possibly and they blamed COVID right they said something about COVID yeah because it would just set off a chain of events people go people start to like you wake even more people up question go, uh the government do such a yeah thing? yeah i mean yeah because it seems like what the fuck could be happening now that they got to protect by not putting out what happened to jfk it's been so much speculation and movies and everything else and then uh you know they go yeah and they just make it worse by going yeah we're not releasing that it's like oh it's a conspiracy you know, Jackie, knew it. Jackie Kennedy used to find Marilyn Monroe's underpants in their bed. There you go. Yeah. That'll do it. That'll piss a girl off to no end. Her underpants. Her underpants. <laughs> JFK. <laughs> uh, 
Deal oh dealers, uh, uh, weed dealers, um, are just openly selling weed in New York City parks. Uh, this is the give them an inch, they take a mile thing. Like, I, weed is, I don't give a fuck, really. I have my issues with people that just incessantly smoke weed on the streets and everything because they just look like they're asleep. They don't, uh, they're not getting anything done. No, nothing gets done when we smoke weed. We know this, not, except for a couple of people that are very good at it. The booth. We're definitely not talking about the booth. The booth. No, the booth, <laughs> they're special. They're special people with the ability to uh, smoke uh, weed and still get shit done. Uh, but yeah, these guys, I'm seeing like you're supposed to be able to smoke weed. They they decriminalize it. And that means like at home you could smoke some weed. Wow. And that, But now it's like literally they've made it okay on the streets to shoot heroin. Yep. Uh, and now they're selling weed in... <laughs> In the park. <laughs> he goes by ghost. <laughs> and no one does anything. Like, the cops aren't going to do anything about this. I, I walked out of here the other day with a beer in my hand. I didn't realize. I usually throw the beer away, take the elevator, and go across the street and cut through the, um, the hotel to go to Penn Station. And I have it in my hand. And I'm like, there's just, when you're doing something and you realize, like, it's, something's off, and I'm like, oh, I don't have a beer in my hand. You know, <laughs> people walk around with beers in paper bags and things like that. Supposedly the law. Uh, and I felt like, oh, shit. And I looked like for a cop or anything. And I'm thinking, it, do I really think a cop's going to fucking stop me and do anything? Because I'm walking around with a beer in my hand while I swear some of the worst criminal debauchery is going on in this neighborhood. Yeah. You might spill some of your beer on that passed out heroin addict, Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be a problem. Right, like That's a man, assault. A man in the bikini on 34th Street shooting up yeah. heroin doesn't no one stops to talk. Right, to right. Him. He's, you know, offended that I'm drinking and walking down the street. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I threw it away just because that's supposedly the law. But I don't know what it takes anymore to get arrested on the street. I don't know what it takes, Let's find what out. you have to do to actually get arrested. I see cops talking with people. I see cops and people yelling at each other, but uh, I'm not seeing arrests being made and people are breaking the laws. I see it out there. Did you see there was a knife fight by Penn Station? What? A fucking knife fight by the pizza place. Um, I guess this is my favorite, 8th and 35th, 34th. Somewhere around there. A good corner. 8th Avenue by the Madison Square Garden. Holy ma macro. It's just so bad. And it's getting that bad around here. But uh, this is a place where someone's been shot. Was it like a duel? Like yes. Like a fencing? It was a real <laughs> knife fight. And one guy got the better of uh, another guy. Here they are. It went from in the pizza place. Whoa. slice hey you know and how um, many knife fights have you been in probably dozens over just that at the mm -hmm. pizza place but that's new york city that's what's going on literally knife fights are going on in the streets and sidewalks and pizza places uh because someone's someone is deemed whatever happened important enough for two people to have a knife fight <laughs> I miss the old New York from two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Remember that old <laughs> New York? Oh, it was so nice and proper and polite. Now it's like, I wasn't sure when I first saw that if that was uh, the new Spielberg version of West Side Story. I thought maybe <laughs> you back that up with the Jets are going to find the... <laughs> the Jets are going to have the day tonight. Doodle -loo, doodle -loo. The black guy's going to get some pizza tonight. Stamp, stamp. Yeah, yeah. And then they, they, they dance fight. Yeah. <laughs> so stupid and gay. Very gay. Very, very gay. Broadway is back, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is an off-Broadway off show. <laughs> I saw something that said, uh, 
Cinderella, I guess they're making into a Broadway musical. And some of the early reviews of rehearsal said, Cinderella, not quite ready for Broadway yet. They need a. And I, I just was looking at the picture and going, why? It looks so gay. It looks completely gay enough to be a Broadway, uh, sec- a successful Broadway production. It's Cinderella standing on stage, right? And then she just surrounded behind her with the gayest men. I don't know when that was a thing in Cinderella. It was greased up, shirtless, abbed, gay gentlemen. Wow. Uh, sounds like a, a hit to me. I don't know. Sounds like a better idea for like a remake of Snow White. Because if she had like seven mm. gay dwarfs around her and they're gay. constantly dressing her and fixing her, like that's a gay story to me. Like, yeah, gay, like fag hags. Yeah. So this is, uh, what is this, Cinderella? I think so. It's not the picture I saw, though. They were all shirtless, like kind of. This is every play. This is everything. It's every play. I'm sure it ended with a big. "Ah, ah!" Yeah, yeah. They're all yelling and fucking whatever. Ugh, Broadway. Broad gay. Ugh. It's such a pain in the ass when you have to go there as a, a boyfriend. Or something. Oh, really? Gotta be honest. Yeah, I don't do it anymore. And Missy doesn't really give a shit about Broadway. But, uh, oh, God, I went out with a couple of girls over the years that uh, needed to go to... What did you see? Les Mis. Fucking The Lion King. Beauty and the Beast. The only thing that was kind of fun was um, uh, the South Park guys there. Yeah. Book of Mormon, oh, so good. Mormon. That was a funny one. That was really like that. funny. Yeah. Everything else, though, is so gay. It is so It's gay. all just gay. Uh, I'm going off to work. We're going off to work today. And, and you're like, it's such an, uh, talk about archaic forms of entertainment, like the circus or things like that. I don't know. Broadway. Probably must be really struggling because, like, who is coming in? Like, dates and families, right? But, yeah. like. The crime is up and people are not. People no one's are, coming here, people right? People are leaving. You, you're not going to be like, oh, let's make a whole yeah. trip of it. Unless you're like, okay, it's probably cheap now. But And the tourists don't come here to go to Broadway for the most part. Like, it may be people that come from England or something. Uh, old people like to old go. Old people. Mm-hmm. Asians, usually they get free tickets and they fall asleep in the front row. Uh, but I don't think you get like people from the Midwest come to the big city to go to some fag production uh, on Broadway. I think yeah. they'd rather just sit in Bubba Gump Shrimp or yeah. the Olive Garden and Take enjoy a, Times a Square. With like a jerking off Elmo. Right, jerking off Elmo or a fucking degenerate heroin addict Batman or something. Uh, and that's it. But no one's going to fucking Broadway. Like Broadway's back. We're opening up and we're going to. No one's here, dummy. <laughs> You're chasing people away from New York with the crime. Too late. Uh, yeah, it just happens all the time. Furious New York City drivers uh, confront radical left-wing environmentalists. So I guess some climate change people decided that rush hour in the morning on the FDR Drive was a great place to chain themselves together and um, and sit across the road to stop traffic. They weren't greeted with uh, support. Get the fuck out of here. Furious New York drivers confront radical left-wing environmentalists blocking, blocking morning rush hour. It's um, not the place to do that. No. No one's ready to receive a message on the FDR. No one's no, like, no, no. you know what? Yeah, let me stop and think. The FDR is uh, just get the fuck out of my way. I'm, I need to get somewhere, and it's going to suck. <laughs> the traffic is already bad enough. It's already bad, right. On and off ramps that are two feet Ugh. long. People can't fucking get on run, and off the, the run road. Them over. But they're like, act now. We need to do something, man. Ugh. Wearing their masks. How lazy, too. Just sitting there. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't have to say Slack anything. No activist. speeches. Yep. But they put their arms through tubes. And then they chain themselves together in the tube so that uh, they can't cut them. It's harder to oh, cut wow. the, the chains off of them. Why can't they just be sitting there topless? Then that would be a that little, would help. A little more of a I would just come over with sledgehammers and start bashing the tubes apart. Well, I don't know. I thought it was just tubes. I don't know. Oh, they're all connected by tubes? They have their yeah, their arms, arms in are there? in tubes. And then where they, they, their arms meet in the tube, they're fastened together with like handcuffs or something. So it's really a pain in the ass to get them. Uh, yeah. So they're like one big jump rope. Yeah. Uh, it would be hilarious if a car hit them because they'd all just go flying. 
All of them. Yeah, do like a, a Red Rover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dragging <laughs> them behind you. Well, that's a great, uh, so you know, little, little piece of New York for you there. Um, and, um, oh, this is great. Uh, Joe Biden, you know, our, our president, 80 million people voted for him. He's uh, the most popular president ever. He, here he is without a mask, coughing in his hand. And then walking up and shaking hands with people. Oh, my God. This is part of the continuing clown thing. <laughs> there he goes. Now there's his, his infected hand. He puts a little, a little notebook. Dementia hands it. Biden. Now he he gives a notebook, the infected notebook, to that guy. He walks over. And here's my cough hand. Let me shake hands with all these people. Uh, spread the uh, virus. Where's his mask? Where's his mask when he's alone getting off the fucking helicopter? And Air Force One and shit. Wow. What the fuck? This is a clown show. It's kabuki theater. This has nothing to do with your safety or anyone else's fucking safety. Let's be real here. But no, it's got to be, you know, where are the man? Get the vaccine. Yeah, make sure you yeah. don't get... Your kid who's never going to get the Rona has to wear it all day at school. Right, all day at school. They're, they're literally... There was a, um, a guy who had a... a Daughter with Down syndrome. The daughter gets off the bus. I'm sure it was the short one, right? Of course. And they had tied the masks to her head. <gasps> they, they, she had the mask. And the, the father is describing how because she's got Down syndrome and Down syndrome children tend to have larger tongues and, and a lot more uh, difficulty getting rid of saliva. He said that, that the mask was soaked in saliva so it's harder to breathe through. Oh, my God. And if there's anyone that should be ex- an exem- exemption from, from having to wear a mask, it's someone with Down syndrome, a, a child in da- with Down syndrome in, in a class. There, there it is. They took the mask because uh. she wouldn't wear it and oh. tied, yeah, tied the edges, uh, the uh, ear things. That's horrible. You got volume? How did, Isn't that terrible? It was quite tight on her face, which was, of course, obstructing her, her ability like, to speak to and her ass. ability to breathe. Well, that father... Well, that father is wicked pissed. Unbelievable. Not only at his wife's uh, womb, but he's mad at... <laughs> okay, I'm teasing, of course. I love the little fuckers. <laughs> you know what this Down syndrome kid needs is less oxygen. Yes. That'll help. Less oxygen for them. That seems to be it. I'm sure the kid was like, no, I don't want to fucking wear the mask, taking it off. And they're like, yeah, well, t- why didn't they just staple it to her head? Just get the stapler and staple it to her fucking uh, head. Uh, so but that's what we're dealing with. That's what we're fucking dealing with. I, I just don't get it. I wonder if I could do that with condoms, like just tie it to the dude. There you go. That would be a trend that would tie catch it. Yeah, no, he keeps trying to take it off. Safety, you know. Tries to take it off every time. Gotta wear it all day like this. Yeah. For our safety. Does that when he's when he's like fucking and diddling? Yeah, we can't at the have same time. Droplets going everywhere. Takes his he takes his finger and 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 on the backstroke pulls that fucking thing off and no one ever knows. Wow. Who would do such a fucking barbaric thing? I think that was a hot tip right there. Oh, it fucking is. She'll never know. One stroke, it's on. One stroke, it's off. It happens that quickly. It's like fucking uh, magic. Where'd the condom go? <laughs> you just pull it out. Is it what's behind your ear? <laughs> <laughs> it's behind your rear. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Pull it out of her ass crack. Uh, here is uh, Representative Banks. He um, has a Twitter account. He was talking about our amazing transgender Secretary, uh, Assistant Secretary of Health, who just became the first woman f- uh, star general of the whatever. Uh, and, and this isn't even fuck this fag or, or uh, tran tranny shouldn't have the. It is a well thought out um, opinion uh, that this gentleman has. And his account was suspended for, for this. L- look at the look at the tweet. Um, well, wait, who is this guy again? He's, He's a, a representative. Okay. Um, calling someone, I go, there it is. Calling someone that was born and lived as a man for 54 years, the first female four-star officer, is an insult to every little girl who dreams of breaking glass 
ceilings one day. Very feminist. Now, yeah, that is a feminist kind of uh, post. It, it It's science. The guy lived as a man for yeah. 54 years. And then calling him the first female is degrading to women and, and disheartening for young girls that want to, you know, uh, attain some um, success in the future. Suspended for that, for misgendering wow. the uh, assistant secretary of health. It's but not he didn't even misgender. Yeah, exactly. No, it wasn't even Thanks. misgendering. It's like, you look, you, he was a man, lived. I don't even think they like saying that's what dead naming or dead gendering. It's like, even if someone lived as a man for 54 years, they were still it. a woman. No, that he was a woman that whole time, but he had to live as a man because he's always been a woman. He was trapped. Science says he was a woman. It, it's so fucking juvenile and stupid. It's like playing a fucking game with someone that turns the game board over or wants to change the rules because they don't like it because they're not winning enough or getting enough attention. You want this to be an example. They want people so afraid to just speak reality, like yeah. what they see in front of them. Oh, he yes. got banned. Well, I better not say what I have to think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She has three kids who called her dad growing up. Like, that well, should disqualify they, you to be the first female. <laughs> they're, they're, their kids should be fucking suspended from everything, too, because uh, they misgendered him, calling him dad. Should have been mommy. Mommy with a penis. We call him mommy with dick. What do you think they call him now? Oh, wait, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't. Oh, my God. So true. I bet. Anyway. Uh, what do you got going on on Wet Spot today? Ooh, it's going to be fun. We got a bunch of gals coming in. You always uh, have su se some Peyton, sexy girls. Uh, Peyton Sinclair, which oh. you may know from uh, heckling you nonstop at the I, baseball show. Best get <laughs> I best get out of here. Lickety split. Well, we're going to be do painting jack-o'-lanterns like, on each of her boobs. We're oh, have, like, nice. A pumpkin painting contest for each of her boobs. For her titties. That's her great. Titties. Also, Shay Seitz will be on the show. Texas Patty. <laughs> Texas patty. Uh, yeah. Mm. So it's good. I, I brought a bunch of paints and stuff. Oh, awesome. Um, it's going to be very festive. Yeah, very Halloween-y. Very That's great. oriented show. Hit oriented programming. We enjoy yeah. that here at Compound Media. Thank you, Chrissy. <laughs> uh, there it is. Okay, there let's see. There we go. Uh, Shea Sites. Very good. Texas patty. And, of course, uh, Peyton. With those big pumpkin-like titties that she will be... Uh, she got new implants that she revealed at the baseball show instead of on... Oh! Tonight, so it was a big reveal, but she already... Is that them. why she wanted to get the attention? That well, I get it now. Whew. I want to thank the lovely Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> Gilbert's great. He was on uh, the first half of the show. He's so fucking uh, funny. Gilbert Gottfried's amazing colossal podcast... Uh, available anywhere you get your finer podcast. Gilbert's great. Oh, Very boy. Oh, yeah. He's Can't doing <laughs> great. Uh, oh, my God. What do we got going on tomorrow? Don Jameson, Ooh. Bob DeBuono, and Eleanor Kerrigan? How, how long is this show going to be? Oh, my God. I got to get out of here. Uh, they'll all be on it, and we will have fun. I assure you. Until then, um, have fun. Have a great night. And we'll see you tomorrow. Arrivederci's and Arvita Saints to all of your Astis Bumantis. <laughs> I love it. Ooh.